Good morning, Barry Pollack, uh, Mr. Assange's lawyer in the United States. Uh, very happy to announce that earlier today the espionage case against Mr. Assange in the Eastern District of Virginia was formally dismissed and the case against him is over, uh, formally and officially. Uh, it's a case that never should have been brought and I hope that we never have another case like it. Uh, the United States has never previously prosecuted somebody for publishing classified information, in this case information that was plainly newsworthy and in the public's interest to know, information that revealed war crimes by the United States government, information that revealed that civilian casualties were exponentially higher than the United States government had admitted. That is not just journalism, that is journalism at the highest level and it absolutely should not ever again be a crime. I could not be happier that Julian is back home in Australia, uh, back with Stella and his family. Uh, he has sacrificed greatly for all of us uh, for freedom of the media, freedom of speech, and I hope that we can all give him time and give his family time to, to heal and get back together. And I am confident that once that happens, uh, the next chapter of Julian's story is yet to be, yet to be written. He's a man who has uh, stood by his ideals, stood by his convictions, generated a worldwide discussion, and I think we're all better off for it. Thank you. Well, here we are. Uh, I'm eternally grateful to everyone who has made this possible. Uh, in this in this building, the the group of friends uh, from across the political spectrum who came together on this issue. Uh, this, I think, it's quite unique that it got people together from from all sides to work towards. Uh, Julian's freedom and to keep it at the top of the agenda for years now and the results uh, we see today we see last night uh, I think the whole world celebrated with us um, it was us meeting on the tarmac but uh, it was the entire world who was celebrating uh, I I think it's important to recognize that uh, this breakthrough came at a time when Julian was uh, going to uh, be able to air his arguments in the in the UK if there had been an uh, appeal. He had been granted permission to appeal. The issue before uh, the High Court was going to be his ability to rely on constitutional protections in the US for freedom of speech and freedom of expression. And it was only then that, the, that uh, there was a breakthrough in the negotiations and things started moving very quickly. I think that's uh, very telling. And if Julian pleaded guilty uh, in, in a federal court in Saipan, it's because he was pleading gu guilty to committing journalism. Uh, this case criminalizes uh, journalism, journalistic activity, standard journalistic activity of news gathering and publishing. And so uh, this, is, this is the reality of this prosecution. It's, uh, the case should never have been brought. And, uh, but the important thing is that Julian is free and that he is no longer in Belmarsh prison and that the case is over and we can put this behind us and Julian is overjoyed and so grateful to the Australian people, uh, to the members of parliament and uh, to, the, to the government and also the opposition who, who came together to, to voice the need for his release. Uh, thank you and uh, I don't know.
It is absolutely wonderful to be here back in Australian Parliament with the great news that Julian is home and free and back home with, and reunited with his family. Uh, it was so remarkable having walked him into a police station in 2010 to be able to walk him onto a plane in London and escort him home to Australia. It's been 14 years of legal battles, 14 years of legal battles that he should never have had to fight. And to have him home in Australia is really a testament, not just to the legal work that we've been doing, and I want to credit the remarkable lawyers that I've been working with, including my US co-counsel, Barry Pollock, but our legal teams in the UK and Europe and around the world who have contributed to this outcome. But we really wouldn't be here without the support of the people that you see standing with us here today, the members of parliament who came together to support Julian and to do advocacy for him here in parliament. When I first started coming down here to Parliament in 2010 and 2011 and walked the halls, it was Scott Ludlam from the Greens who led that initiative and we would speak to an empty room. After a decade of advocacy, bringing together people from across the political divide, the work that's been done here in Parliament by this group of friends has really changed things for Julian. The parliamentary resolution that was passed through this parliament with two thirds of the support, government and the crossbench, was all the difference in terms of our advocacy internationally and in changing the political position in the United States and firming up our government's position. I want to thank our Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, for the principled leadership that he showed as leader of the opposition in saying enough is enough, in his keeping his word as Prime Minister and raising it at the highest levels. Without that support, we wouldn't be where we are today. But that came from the Australian public demanding it, and it came from this group of members of Parliament who put it on the agenda and continued to put it on the agenda until it became the Australian Government's position. And so I really want to thank everyone here today for their remarkable contribution. We wouldn't be here without the global movement of people that came together to support Julian and in support of free speech. And that's what made the difference. We've just negotiated the return of an Australian citizen from the most powerful country in the world who were prosecuting him for doing journalism. He faced 175 years in prison for publishing evidence of war crimes, human rights violations and corruption, serious wrongdoing by the United States. And that is the basis upon which he was in prison for five and a half years in a high security prison and the basis for his plea that we've seen take place in the last few days. I think it's a remarkable testament to the Australian people that they came together to support this, to the Australian government and to Australian diplomacy that we were able to negotiate this outcome. It was a long and complex negotiation with the United States, but it wouldn't have been possible without the support of the Australian government and the, the members of the Australian parliament who supported us along the way. So it is a very happy day to be here. I am delighted that Julian's home. I'm delighted he can be here with his family. And I think it's important that everybody continues to rally around the free speech issues that are so important in this case and continue to demand better free speech protections for journalists here in Australia and in the US and for whistleblowers. And with that, I want to make sure that we recognise David McBride, who is in prison here in Australia for having revealed information about war crimes in Afghanistan. It is unacceptable he's in prison and I cannot stand here today to talk about free speech without mentioning him and I know that Julian will be happy that we have. So thank you very much. It's really good to be back. Uh, today we're celebrating. We don't get many celebrations in this kind of work. Uh, there weren't many of us to begin with, but it's just incredible to be standing here with so many of my former colleagues. You will see that this is one of those rare issues that unites people across the political spectrum. You can tell that just from the people assembled here this morning. I want to pay credit to the parliamentary friends of Julian Assange for bringing him home. They brought him home. Also, because they're here, to the incredible, sharp legal representation that Julian has had through this, this long campaign. Uh, and I, would, I do want to acknowledge the Albanese government. It's a, an example of a government leading from the front. The diplomatic work, some of it behind the scenes, some of it in public, the fact that we were able to unite people from across the political spectrum, it's, it's a real credit. It is also about some of the work that goes on that's maybe a little bit less visible from in here, people who are organising rallies and banner drops in 2011, 
people who signed petitions. You know, it was a global grassroots movement that gave us the momentum, that gave that impetus to the diplomatic work that's got us over the line uh, once and for all. And ultimately, this is about you. If you're in here with a camera or a press pass, Julian has done this for you. Him and his colleagues knew exactly what they were walking into. They knew the risks that they were taking, and they did it anyway. And they did it in part to protect your right to do your job, to inform us about what government is doing in our name. So we're celebrating. For me, that celebration is tempered by the fact that the United States government, our supposed ally, was willing to torture an Australian citizen and one of your colleagues for 14 years, and that it took a global movement to get him out. So we are celebrating, but I feel as though we also need to have in our minds, forefront in our minds today, what about the other whistleblowers? What about the other journalists? What about the other publishers? This is about all of us collectively. One chapter ends, thank God, and another one begins. Thanks all for being here. I think it's any Can questions. Step up to the mic, please. No, any, any questions. What's, what's, what's Julian going to do now? Is, is it WikiLeaks 2.0 and uh, will he be soliciting information from uh, Russian hackers and other international figures? <laughs> Uh, Julian plans to swim in the ocean every day. He plans to sleep, sleep in a real bed. He plans to taste real food. Uh, and he plans to enjoy his freedom. Julian is the most principled man I, I know, and he will always defend uh, human rights and um, speak out against injustice. And he can choose how he does that because he is a free man. So you yeah, think about the potential for a pardon from the United States. You said yesterday that you were considering yeah. requesting a presidential pardon. How would that work? The, the, the President of the United States has absolute pardon power. Uh, president Biden or any subsequent president uh, absolutely can and in my mind should issue a pardon to Julian Assange. Uh, obviously he's just been released, he's just gotten home. I suspect that that will take some time, uh, but I certainly hope and expect that the same kind of support that he received uh, when he was in prison will again gather steam and this president or future president of the United States will have the wisdom to pardon him. Look, um, I think the bilateral relationship between Canberra and Washington is as strong as it has ever been, and it is getting stronger on account of the common security challenges we face. However, for some time now, uh, the incarceration of Julian Assange was a thorn in the side of that relationship. It was just niggling away on the margins. That has now been fixed. Um, so I now see reason to be very optimistic about the bilateral relationship. Um, uh, you know, that thorn has been pulled out. And I'll go on the same line with the first question. Has Julian ever indicated to you, or do you think that if he was given up to the public documents again, is he just going to do it all again? Um, Julian just got back from a, a 72 hour um, flight, long flight to freedom and five years of incarceration in a high security prison and seven years before that arbitrarily detained in the Ecuadorian embassy and a year and a half before that he was under a house arrest. Uh, he is just savoring freedom for the first time in 14 years. Uh, he needs time to rest and and to recover and he's he's a He's just rediscovering normal life, and he's, he needs space to do that. Stella, has you had time to speak to the children yet? Can you talk us through whether he's done it to get in person, or what it was like when they were first able to speak with him as a free man? Um, not yet, because we want to do it when we're, uh, when we're in the same place. Um, 
I, I'm obviously here. And the kids were asleep when, when he arrived um, uh, last night. So, uh, yeah, it's, it still, it still um, hasn't happened yet. But they were very excited when they, when they found out that Daddy was coming home. I had to tell them gradually, so they were very, very excited. They were jumping on the sofa, and um, I managed to send the video of them reacting and jumping on the sofa uh, to to Julian while he was, I think, in Saipan, uh, and he was he was very, very pleased. And we better have a last question so we can make that happen. Last question. A question for the legal counsel responsible about the plea deal. Question about the plea deal. I've been the plea deal has a clause in it that required Mr. Assange to destroy any uh, information that was still in his possession that was unpublished, that was United States related information, or in the possession of WikiLeaks or its affiliates. Could you explain to us why they insisted on including that clause, and has any information had to be destroyed as a result of that clause? Uh, you'd have to ask the United States government why they insisted on including that clause. Uh, the materials that we're talking about are now more than a decade old. Uh, I don't know to what extent any still existed or what possible value they might have. Certainly no national security value. In fact, uh, the United States in court in Saipan yesterday conceded and the judge found that there is no evidence that any harm has befallen any individual anywhere in the world as a result of uh, Mr. Assange's publications. That being said, they did insist uh, that he issue an instruction to the editor of WikiLeaks to destroy any uh, materials they might have that were not published, and uh, Julian has complied with that provision and issued that instruction. The United States Department said overnight again that his actions put others at risk of harm. This is different to what the judge in Saipan um, I, I think the uh, U.S. press releases bear little to no relationship to what actually happened in that courtroom in Saipan. Uh, Julian has a story that the world will want to hear. Is, is, is a movie here, a book here, a paper here, anything like that in the words, particularly given his section though that we have very strict proceeds of crime in this country that stop people from profiting, criminals from profiting from such selling their stories. Uh, Julian literally just got off a plane. Um, I have many stories to tell, uh, and on the on the plea uh, agreement, I believe, and Barry, correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, Julian isn't allowed to um, request uh, freedom of information, make freedom of information requests from the U.S. government, uh, but you can. And I encourage you to. Why, why would they want him not to do that? So please do. Cool. Um, thanks, everybody. Ben, if an Australian Prime Minister talking to an Australian citizen challenges the relationship with the United States, there's a problem with the relationship. Um, thanks, everyone, for, for coming today. Very good photo.